Shabbat Shalom. Oh, how wonderful it is to be together this evening. It's a special night at Temple. We had a Shabbat Mishpacha service earlier for our young families, and um, just looking into the eyes of the children of the future generations of Temple Israel is in and of itself inspiring. And you recognize that you find God in all places, all over the world, and uh, in this moment of Shabbat. And we offer praise to God with the words that can be found in your prayer books on page 213. One other little note. Sorry, one other little note about uh, this song. I didn't know, but I didn't realize. But actually, the song is called Beyond, and it actually came um, by way of Rabbi Josh as inspiration. Um, he had a conversation at some point with Dan Nichols, and Dan credits Josh with being the person who, uh, who helped him realize these, these words in this song. Kabbalist Isaac Luria claimed that because of God's tzimtzum, God's contraction, there is randomness at the basis of the universe. I don't know if he was right. I do know that from now on, though, there is randomness as the basis of the choosing of the candlelighters at Temple Israel. <laughs> and the winner of the lottery this week was Nida Schwartz. We ask her to come forward as we turn to page 13 for the lighting of our Sabbath lights.
Light is the foundation of life, yet impossible to touch. Light is flowers growing and fruit trees blossoming, photosynthesis and rainbows shimmering. Light is energy and romance, enlightenment and lighting. Light is red and violet and magenta and blue, lasers and campfires, warmth and illumination, the sunset and the dawn. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher kitshanu b'mitzvotav, v'tzivanu lahadlik ner shel shabbat. Blessed are you, Adonai our God, eternal source of the universe, who hallows us with mitzvot and commands us to kindle the lights of Shabbat. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher kitshanu we turn to page 34 for the Chadodi. Since we started with Kabbalah, let's continue in that vein on the bottom of page 26. On the bottom of page 26, we'll be reading from the Zohar. And if we do this just right, we should all burst into a ball of God's light and the Messiah will come. It's going to be amazing. You'll see. We read together. And God said, let there be light. This first light was created before the sun and the stars. It was this very same light that Moses witnessed on Mount Sinai. And when God showed it to David, he burst into song. In the beginning, the entire universe radiated with this light. But then it was withdrawn and stored away for the righteous, waiting for the day when all the world shall be one. Until that time, this sacred light is hidden away like a seed in the earth, and thus it is written, 
Light is sown for the righteous. Turn to page 42 for the Chatzikadosh. Ikadah, Ikadah, on page 48 in the Hebrew together. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Bidvaro Ma'ariv Aravim, Bechochma Poteach She'arim, Uvitvuna Meshane Itim, Umachalif Et Hazmanim, Umasader Et HaKochavim, Bemishmero Tehem Barakia Kirtzono, Bore Yom Valayla, Golel or Mipne Hoshech, Vehoshech, Mipne or Umavir Yom Umevi Laila, Umavdil Bain Yom Uvein Laila, Adonai Sevaot Shemo, El Chai Vekayam, Tamid Yim Loch Alenu Leolam Vaed, Baruch Ata Adonai, Hamarib Aravim. Blessed are you, O God, who makes the evening fall. I must admit the reason I turn to that page is because my son has been practicing that page for Hebrew school. So I feel like I'm a professional now at reading that Hebrew. And thank you for joining with me in that experience. So we continue on page 49. We are loved by an unending love. We are embraced by the covenant of Abraham and Sarah. We are guided by the still small voice within us. We are warmed by the light of the Lord. We are loved by an unending love. A ne'er tamid to be tended from generation to generation. And a gentle love. Giving meaning to our existence, structure to our lives. Out of all the generations who have embraced their covenant. Page 55. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai 
Together, page fifty-seven. Be'ahavta <laughs> Vishinan <laughs> Al mezuzot betecha u vircharecha leman tizkeru veasitef et kol mitzvotai mitem kedoshim lelohechem ani Adonai elohechem asher hotzeti etchem meretz mizraim. Yot lachem Elohim, Ani Adonai Elohechem Emet. Top of page 61. The whole door of a door, Chayav Adam Lirot et Atzmo, Ki Iluhu Yatsa Mimitraim. In each and every generation, we must see ourselves as if we too had gone out of the land of Egypt. And so here tonight, we feel the energy of that ancient story where our ancestors crossed from slavery into freedom. We remember their joy as we sing together on page 62, Mi Chamocha. Please join me together in the English on page 64. Cause us, our Creator, to lie down in peace, and raise us up, O Sovereign God, to renew life and peace. Spread over us the shelter of your peace, guide us with your good counsel, and be our shield of mercy and of peace. Baruch Ata Adonai, Hapore Sukat Shalom Aleinu, Be'al Kol Amo Yisrael, Be'al Yerushalayim. 
Blessed are you, Adonai, whose shelter of peace is spread over us, over all your people Israel, and over Jerusalem. Continue together, page 65. <laughs> talk about mothers and fathers. I'm sorry I ducked out. I was giving goodnight kisses to my kids. So we continue together at the bottom of page 69. Prayer invites us to let God's presence suffuse our spirits, to let God's will prevail in our lives. Prayer cannot bring water to parched fields, nor mend a broken bridge, nor rebuild a ruined city, but prayer can water an arid soul, mend a broken heart, and rebuild a weakened will. Baruch Ata Adonai, Mechaye Hakol. Blessed are you, O God, who renews all things. Ata Kadosh, Veshim Chakadosh, Ukadoshim Bechol Yom Yahalleluch Asera. Baruch Ata Adonai, Ha'el Hakadosh. 
seated, we pray silently. absolutely love when he sings that. It's so beautiful. And it also draws our attention to a prayer that we don't always sing in our services. It's on page 75. And Ritzay, Lirtzot, it's in modern Hebrew, it talks about a need. But here it's really talking about God find favor in us and in our prayers and do it in love and receive what we are saying. And I think my favorite part says, El Karov Lechol Koreav, which means God is close to all who cry out to him. And I think that when we think about healing, sometimes maybe that's when we feel like God is furthest away. And so I think it's so wonderful that when we say the Misha Berach together, maybe we're saying it for someone who's feeling like God is a little bit removed. And so as we join together on page 72 in the Misha Berach, Hopefully we can send our prayers to those that we love, those in our family, our friends, and help them feel God's nearness just a little bit more. So 
source of strength, who blessed the ones before us. Help us find the courage to make our lives a blessing, and let us say, Those in need of healing with Rufuash Lema, the renewal of body, the renewal of spirit, and let us say, I received the best invitation in the mail this week. And you did too if you subscribe to the IRAC listserv. That's the Israel Religious Action Center, the social action arm of the reform movement in Israel, not the country Iraq. So Iraq and Iraq. In some ways, it was a wedding invitation like any other. It was romantic and beautiful and elegant to be sure, but also different because it is more than a traditional wedding. This is three weddings and a statement. For as the invitation reads, two people fall in love, decide to spend their lives together, find an officiant, stand under a chuppah to take their vows, and then celebrate their joy. Except in Israel, it's not that simple. As you may know, Israel's ultra-Orthodox chief rabbinate maintains rigid control over marriages and divorces in Israel, deciding who can marry and who cannot. There are people who can't get married at all in Israel because they don't fall into the proper halakhic categories. For example, a Kohen, a member of the priestly class, can't marry a divorcee. Or a mamzer, technically a bastard, but halakhically not really what you think of when you hear that word, can only marry another mamzer. So if you fall into these types of categories, and there are plenty of them, you are prohibited from getting married under Orthodox law. Our three couples are like any other couples you might find here in the United States or in Israel or anywhere in the world, but because they are either gay, not considered Jewish according to the chief rabbinate, or simply because they reject the rabbinate's strict control over matters of marriage and divorce, they are choosing to marry in a ceremony outside of the state of Israel, both in order to get married and to make the statement rejecting ultra-Orthodox jurisdiction over all religious life in Israel. So, on Sunday, December 3rd at 11 o'clock in the morning, Knesset member Ksenia Svetlova and Anatoly Aliyev, Alona Livne and Ori Berwald, Elizabetha Komkov and Valentin Bolodovsky are getting married at Temple Emmanuel in New York City, and not just by one rabbi or even two six prominent rabbis from the New York City area from both the reform and the conservative movements are officiating. Ivrak profiled one of the couples on the recent listserv message. As I read their story, I realized that the situation reflects any one of us, our friends, our children, our grandchildren. It could be any of us. So, meet Valentin and Eliz Elizabetha. Born in St. Petersburg, Russia, they met as children in the Jewish Agency Sunday School and later on each separately moved to Israel. And then Facebook came along and they reconnected about five years ago, chatting almost every day online and then decided to meet. They've been inseparable ever since. Valentin is currently working as an electrical engineer at Intel and Elizabetha is in an academic preparatory course at the Technion in Haifa. They are members of Shirat Hayam congregation in Haifa. And the reason they can't get married in Israel is because Elizabetha is a reform convert and therefore not recognized by the chief rabbinate as Jewish. She actually just finished conversion last month, which is super exciting. And it's true, she could have gone through an orthodox conversion and none of this would be an issue, but 
She's a reformed Jew whose values and beliefs lay with the reform movement. So why would she do it any other way? And why is it that the Orthodox rabbinate decides who gets to be a Jew and who not? Why aren't all the movements legitimate and authentic forms of Judaism in Israel? All this happens at a time in the Torah where love and family is at the fore. In fact, last week's Torah portion tells one of my all-time favorite stories because I'm really a romantic at heart. And this story is of when Rebecca and Isaac meet. Abraham had sent his servant Eliezer out to find a wife for Isaac. And when he returns, he's brought Rebecca with him. And seeing Isaac, her intended for the very first time, she's so taken by him, saying to herself, my, who is this handsome man? That's my addition, it's not actually in the Torah. <laughs> she's overwhelmed, and she actually falls off her camel and veils herself in modesty, and that part is in the Torah. So I'd like to tell this story at the Bedeccan before the wedding, the ceremony where we veil the bride. In these moments, just before they're about to walk down the aisle, we feel that excitement and the thrill of seeing our beloved for the very first time. And while brides today aren't usually sitting on and then falling off of camels when meeting their intended spouses, it is still that same feeling that our biblical ancestors felt. I'm sure you've felt it too. Hearts pounding and your face blushing, excited and nervous. It's definitely the stuff of a romance novel. And in next week's Parsha, Jacob and Rachel meet. And theirs is love at first sight. And their connection and attraction is sealed with a kiss. He then works seven years for the chance to marry her, and then seven more actually to do so. Talk about true love, and talk about romance novels. Love and marriage seem to flourish in all of these chapters. Couples meet, fall in love, and get married. And isn't that the way it's supposed to be? At the same time that the Iraq wedding invitation arrived, the Hebrew Union College Jewish Institute of Religion, the Reform Movement's Rabbinical College, where I and our other clergy were ordained, ordained the 100th Israeli Reform Rabbi. Imagine, in a country where the ultra-Orthodox control religious life, there are now 100 Reform Rabbis. As Rabbi Aaron Pank and the president of HUCJR states, this is an historic milestone. Our 100 Israeli rabbi alumni are pioneers who are building communities, creating congregations, educating all generations, advancing egalitarian and LGBTQ inclusion, and promoting tolerance. They are sustaining tradition while transforming it to address the needs of contemporary Israeli Jewish life. They are providing a vital liberal option amid the polarity of ultra-Orthodoxy and secular Israeli identity. A historic milestone, indeed. To date, there are now 50 reform congregations in Israel, ranging from small neighborhood congregations to large multifaceted synagogue centers in larger cities. In a place where until recently Jews affiliated is either orthodox or secular, this says something significant about the growing liberal Jewish population, saying there are options here besides being ultra-orthodox or nothing. It's a time of push and pull. Progressive Judaism is growing in Israel, demonstrating there are so many different ways to be Jewish. It's exciting and encouraging and inspiring, and it makes me feel so hopeful. And yet, in my same inbox this week, I received a notice of physical violence at the wall against the Hebrew Union College's Board of Governors and students who were trying to bring in a Torah for prayer. I heard it was the most violent exchange yet between Reform and Orthodox. And in my inbox, there was also a letter about the University of Michigan's central student government voting 23 to 17 with five abstentions on a divestment resolution. And while for now this resolution has no bearing on the university's actual investment policy, a vote like this is deeply divisive among the students and only creates more hostility on campus. But because I'm a romantic, and I really am, I'm looking on the bright side. I'm looking on the bright side by celebrating three weddings and a statement. For these three couples, and on behalf of all the couples who for years have been running off to Cyprus to get married, out of reach of the chief rabbinate, 
I'm looking on the bright side, knowing that 100 reform rabbis are on the ground in Israel, paving the way for a vibrant and vital reform Judaism. I'm looking on the bright side, reminding myself that we here at home can make the Michigan difference simply by contacting the University of Michigan's president's office with an email or a call and condemning the student government's resolution for divestment. And I'm looking on the bright side because planning two trips to Israel, I'm planning two trips to Israel in the coming year. One, a summer rabbinic mission with APAC, and another, our family mission next winter. And there's also an adult trip this spring. Why not come to Israel with us? There's a lot going on in our world today. It's a little overwhelming to say the least, but little by little, I believe that we can make a difference here and in Israel. And it starts when our brides and grooms walk down that aisle in New York City, recite their vows, exchange their rings, and then as they break the glass, we all shout Mazel Tov. Shabbat Shalom. That has divided us will merge. Power and compassion will be wed. Softness will replace all of the harshness of the world when everywhere is Eden once again. Both men and women will be gentle. Both women and men will be strong. No one will be bound unto another person's will when everywhere is Eden once again. And all will live in harmony harmony with each other, and all will live in harmony, in harmony with the earth, when everywhere is Eden once again. Wealth and freedom will be shared by all, will have an equal part of Earth's supply. There will be no greed as everybody's needs are met, when everywhere is Eden once again. And all will live in harmony. For the sick, all will care for the old. All will care for the weak, all will nourish the young, and all will cherish the creations of God.
hear the wow? I heard it. I just want to make sure you heard it. I'd like to invite Ellie Baker forward, a member of our executive committee, to deliver our congregational announcements. Shabbat Shalom. Well, just like there's a lot going on in Israel, there's always a lot going on at Temple. So, let's start out. The Goodman Family Judaic and Archival Museum has a new permanent place for their permanent collection. Make a point to stop by the beautiful Wasserman Atrium. Be inspired to make a gift in honor or memory of a loved one, or to honor a life cycle event, and at the same time, help fund one of the current or future items in the collection. On November 19th at 7 p.m., please join us for our next Schmier concert as we welcome the consummate practitioners of pianism, Claire Abersold and Ralph Neewen. Do not miss this truly special musical event. Please note it's an earlier time. Also on November 19th at 5 p.m., there will be an interfaith Thanksgiving service at First Presbyterian Church of Birmingham. Join together as we give thanks to God for all that God has given us. We will share worship and discover the roots of thankfulness in each of our traditions and then share a meal and thanks at 6 p.m. No charge for dinner, but please bring canned, goods, canned or dry goods as a donation. After that, you can go to the Schmier concert. Um, Tuesday, November 28th, join us as we learn from Wayne State University professors Saeed Khan and Howard Lupovitz. They will discuss where our two communities intersect and how they differ, as well as the challenges each community faces. We will share this evening with guests from the Muslim Unity Center in the hopes that we can build stronger bridges between our two communities. Reservations are required. Wondering what to do with last year's coats? This year we're teaming up with Tappers for their annual coat, mitten, hat, glove, and boot drive beginning now until the end of November. You can purchase new or donate gently used items. The items will be distributed by mid-December. For further information or to RSVP or volunteer for any of these programs, check the information table or you can call Temple during regular business hours. Please join us after services for the Oneg and Shabbat readings. On behalf of the officers and the Board of Trustees, let me wish, wish each of you a Shabbat Shalom. So as Neil mentioned when we began our service, earlier tonight we had all of our, many of our youngest people in the building as a part of Shabbat Mishpacha and a family Shabbat dinner. But I believe there are at least one brave soul who decided to come to this Shabbat service. So if you are a brave soul who's under the age of 11 years old, 11 years old or younger, or 12 years old or younger, or even 13 years old or younger, you know, for that matter, if you are 18 years old or younger, <laughs> And you'd like to come up now for a Shabbat treat, we'll do so as we turn to page 189 and rise for Aleinu. <laughs> Take a moment in our service to recall the names of those in our congregation and community who have died in the past 30 days, the period of Sloshim. Helen Edelman, Jack Edelman, Carol Oslander, Oscar Band, Carolyn Benderski, Brenda Barron, High Blinder, Sherry Kale, Kenneth Chaikin, Lori Cohen, 
Jeffrey Eaton, Jacqueline Eckhouse, Joel Fink, Elaine Garcia, Francis Goldberg, Marsha Harris, Carl Kirshner, Mark Klinger, Barbara Crone, David Levinson, Max Markson, Val Resnick, Helene Robbins, Melvin Rohde, Milton Rotenberg, Joseph Rothenberg, Selma Shargal, Rita Steinberg, Jeff Stahlberg, Irving Tabachman, Zachary Wallace, Harvey Wolf, William Wolf, John Zumbrennan. We also recall those whose yard sites occur on this Shabbat. Sadie Bieber, Mark Belgrad, Faye Blatnikoff Schwartz, David Brenner, Dr. Daniel Butson, Cecilia Cipriani, Gerald Emmer, Leo First, Molly First, Norma Galper, Sylvia Goldberg, Dorothy Jean Lunkin Gould, William Hacker, Irving Isaacs, Nathan Malbin, Arnold Royal, Irving Rubin, Morris Rudin, Sarah Weiss, Saul Koretsky, Lloyd Weingarten, Leo Gottfurst, Shirley Kramer, Meyer Goodman, Charles Fantish, Laura Levine, Marsha Lowinger Harris, Cheryl Safe, Ethel Okrent, Albert Okrent, Sarah Levine, Barbara Manko, Mildred Noven, Irving Goldman, Morris Silber, Lori Cohn, Leonard Galper, Blake Mann, George Taxi, Rose Russick, Robert Trepic, and Carol Sable. We remember them with love and honor them with words of Kaddish on page 199. <laughs> Ba'agalau vizman kari v'imru, amen. Yehei shmei rabba mevorach le'olam le'olmei olmaya. Yit barach v'yishtabach v'yit pa'ar v'yitromam v'yit nasei. V'yit adar v'yit ale v'yit halal shmei d'kudisha b'richu. Le'ela min kol b'irchata v'shirata. Tushbechata v'nechemata. Da'amiran v'yalma v'yimru, amen. Yehei Shlama Rabba Min Shemaya, Bechayim Aleinu Ve'al Kol Yisrael Ve'imru Amen. O Se Shalom Bimromav, Hu Ya'ase Shalom, Aleinu Ve'al Kol Yisrael Ve'imru Amen. May the source of peace send peace to all who mourn and comfort to all who are bereaved among us. Amen. Find someone on your right and left to put an arm around as we join together in these words, final words of blessing and love to Filat Haderech. Uh-huh.
שבת שלום. שבת שלום. שקוף.